you doing, bud? We're uh, we're actually um, talking about functional medicine today, and uh, want to get your point of view today in terms of functional medicine and discuss the ideas of what functional medicine is for the, our population. We've been discussing the topics uh, over the last couple of months, and we've been kind of pointing out fibromyalgia, um, wellness care, uh, metabolic syndrome, weight loss, basal metabolic rates. You and I have been discussing the issues affecting our communities. Um, these these issues are such that uh, they impact people's lives. Um, I know you have had a passion for functional medicine as well as myself. What does functional medicine mean to your patients and your particular type of practice, Mario? Alex, this the this is a great question. Also, this is a, a very uh, in depth answer. So I'm gonna simplicity as I always do for for as many uh, topics that we will deal with uh, for uh, months to come um, functional medicine is the medicine of creating synergy and clarity in terms of not only symptom care but prevention of the diagnosed problem plus management and efficiency in recovery. So, so what we're dealing with is, is not only one cause, but we're dealing with the circle of, of influence, as, uh, as, as you all know. Uh, for example, you know, uh, let's take uh, you know, depression, for example, or inflammation. Uh, in functional medicine, one of the big foundational conversations that we will talk about and that we will really address with all of our listeners and viewers is inflammation, okay? Um, another topic that, that is very much in, in media is depression. But if we look at inflammation and, uh, and we discuss that, inflammation in itself is something that is not treated unless you have a sports injury. And then, you know, like a swollen ankle or swollen knee and and usually the conversation goes something like this uh, you know put some ice and take some anti-inflammatories and we're done but really inflammation is a very very huge problem within our health system and health condition to all of us because if we really look at the congruency of what inflammation is inflammation now more than ever is the cause of many problems that we are dealing with right now, such as diabetes, such as fibromyalgia, such as, um, you know, we talked about metabolic syndrome, uh, such as, uh, uh, you know, another, another topic that we looked at is obesity. Uh, and, and so if we look at these major topics, they all have a root. And this is functional medicine is about finding the root cause and addressing it in a very powerful way, Alex, to not only wait until the diagnosed condition appears. And this is why a lot of our viewers are, are going every year to doctors and they come out of their yearly evaluation or health eval. You know, how you go in and you go, oh, I got my yearly exam and I did great. Well, did you? Mm -hmm. Did you do great? And, and so what I'd like to ask you, Alex, is how is it in our conversation, in your practice, when, you know, how many patients come in and they go, well, I, for the past two, three years, I, I've been gone to, to uh, uh, you know, my physician, and he told me I was fine, fine. What does that really mean, Alex? What we, we, we're finding out, Mario, is that the, the science of inflammation it actually is inflammology if you can kind of call it that. Inflammology, we're inflammologists, whether you have an inflamed uh, back, uh, a insulin issue where you have reactive inflammation, uh, where you have rheumatoid, uh, or in some degenerative issues that you have, inflammation affects us all. Um, blood sugar issues are at the root of, of, of many inflammatory disorders. Uh, we're finding out, and the studies through the NCBI are, are, are indicating that uh, the most important component of inflammation is sugar. Um, at the root of inflammation, uh, we're, we're finding uh, more often than not, not just immunoglobulins, immuno, immuno, uh, 
agents, immunological agents in our body that are responsible, but, you know, eliciting catalyst of sugar as being one of the greatest causes of it. And in, in our practice, because we are physical medicine doctors, and what we do is we, we look for the cause. Now, sometimes it could be as simple as I fell off a tree. It could be that way. Uh, it could also be I could have an individual who's saying, you know what, I have had nothing but pain over the last few years. Or someone who's actually at the threshold of pain uh, and wonders why they, they launch a inflammatory episode such as sciatica or some sort of rheumatoid episode, uh, some sort of brain fog. You could even say that's associated with inflammation. Mm -hmm. Right. A study after study that you can you and I study every day, uh, we're, we're seeing the connection between sugars, inflammation, insulin, diabetes, and uh, a sedentary lifestyle. So when we look at a functional medicine approach, we have to include all the aspects that are included in, in medicine that are encompassing of, of inflammation. Uh, endocrinology, neurology, orthopedics, this is what we do, you and I. Uh, and what we have to do is we have to bring this new awareness to the people of our, of our communities because uh, the word is functional medicine. And in, in, our, in our world, what we look for is, is a doctor who's going to look at us and treat us individually. Mm -hmm. um, if I could be bold, I could say that if a doctor is a is, is going to not talk about nutrition and understand how a lifestyle, spiritual mind, body has anything to do with your body uh, or, or doesn't have the time to go over your medical findings or, or explain to you line by line the, the presentations of a metabolic uh, panel. Uh, those are the panels that actually assess, you know, deep insights into the blood. Uh, get a new doctor. It's really that simple. Um, get a new doctor. Find a new one that can sit down and teach you what's going on. So functional medicine is, is a new beginning. It's a new beginning. It's been around for the last decade or so, uh, and it's becoming really popular amongst uh, the communities around the United States, understanding that mm -hmm. there's a connection between many different components of the body, from the metabolic issues to the neurological to the endocrinological um, to the joint, the structure, the musculoskeletal system, the, the mind, the mind and body. Uh, so in terms of our practice, Mario, I'd say that the world's changing really fast mm -hmm. and people are becoming aware that we are not looking for a, a care process that fixes or starts to fix us when we go become clinical because there's different stages. There's subclinical. And uh, a lot of these people, you'll hear of a pre-diabetes or you're pre and they start with metformin. How about just try to avoid to get there. And most of us can with a good Correct. diet and good exercise and good understanding and good dynamics. So I'd say it's a huge impact and it changes every type of practice. Gastroenterologists see this every day. Sadly, the, the, the beginnings of this process uh, begins in the gut, but because of the disorders are so rampant by the time they become clinical, Many gastroenterologists become surgeons, and they're just removing guts and and removing intestines. And this is, you know, this Alex kind of, you know, I want to really compliment and and acknowledge the the benefits of of all of our colleagues. Uh, and and I would say this: we as physicians, we all start with with the um, the passion to heal the world, to do good to impact, and uh, to do our very best in our own specialty. You know, whether it's orthopedics, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, physical medicine, whether it's uh, chiropractic, whether it's, uh, you know, cardiology, we start with that. And, and unfortunately, due to the fact of the, the population and the, the, um, the overload, I would say this, the overload in, in disease care, and, and there, there's different levels of disease care. Uh, you can see the, the amount of, uh, um, you know, dialysis centers that are opening up everywhere. That, that's a direct sign that we're failing, you know. Uh, you, can, you can see uh, all of the, the issues of type 2 diabetes, all of the secondary issues. So what, what's happening is the overload in the supply and demand, it's so high that, that our fellow physicians are are can just manage disease right. they just manage disease i mean they do not have half an hour to an hour to sit with one patient and to say strategically you know like we do you know strategically say okay where are you at 
what is the lifestyle that, that you're living? Here's your panel, metabolic panel. You know, a lot of times when we're dealing with metabolic issues and, and uh, inflammation, and especially in physical medicine, that's what we're, we're focusing and, and really impacting our community. We are looking at subclinical issues, right, Alex? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and this is where we're looking at, for example, deficiencies in vitamin D, deficiencies in omega-3s, right? Mm -hmm. Low thyroid. See, mm -hmm. those are components that, again, because of the overload, overload of, of the system, overload of the patient care, most of our colleagues don't have the time to, to do the background and the strategic planning. So, again, they go to, let's take care of the disease, and you know what? You don't have it yet. You're fine. Uh, here's a handout. Uh, eat better, and I'll see you next year. Well, guess what happens? There's a huge failure rate, huge. And this is where there's an economic impact, right, Alex? Economic, and there's a health impact. Because what's happening is that most people can't afford sickness care. They cannot afford failure. Because once you are in that tranche, once you, you are in that world of I am diabetic, I am, you know, I have cancer, I have, you know, um, uh, you know, bowel dysfunction. I have, you know, all of these things. You know, what's happening, I have um, fatty liver. You know, once you get into that, that label, that diagnosis, now it is really, really difficult to not only manage it, but come out of it. So this is what I would say. Functional medicine, in, in my opinion, is the solution not only to preventing major health issues, but also maintaining your optimal health naturally. So what that means is we're minimizing the use of heavy medication and he heavy pharmaceutical use, which I, I think everyone wants. I mean, I really believe I, that. I do so. I mean, I, I, would, I would not ask any one of my colleagues, you know, that practice cardiology or endocrinology or, or uh, you know, uh, private practice or family practice and say, well, uh, what is your mission today? Do you want to do you want to prescribe more meds? No, none of them will to say that. To that point, Mario. No, I, I bet none you, of them. Yeah, to that point, I'd say that most doctors, when they start practicing, um, they're a little bit um, more open to the options of medicine as as a choices and medications that are obviously appropriate. Uh, but as they get older, I've seen that they become much more conservative of uh, with their approaches surgically as well as with medications because we do understand that the the number one component that heals our body is our body itself our cells absolutely so as we look at our structures and we look at our uh, dynamics as we go through the process we we can we can lean heavily on the body by making it healthy um you know by doing things that basically prevent disease uh and disorders before they arise uh the world um can I hear constantly, constantly that they sense that they had a problem way in the past. They just kind of pushed it off, pushed it off. Yes. Today, functional medicine has the ability to kind of assess situations, uh, immune responses, um, inflammatory disorders before they become clinical. Yeah, and and before you know, before they hit that that threshold. You know, Alex, it's all about hitting that threshold. You know, it, it's kind of I I. I Create that analogy because people really understand this. It's like your car, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Do you want to wait until the red light comes on that says engine and then do something about it? No. Mm -hmm. No, that doesn't that doesn't make sense. So so again, why do you do maintenance and diagnostics? Why? Because you want to prevent Prevents that wear that. and tear mm -hmm. and that damage. Because once it's got that damage, for us as as the human functional biomechanical, bioenergetic, biochemical, and spiritual system that, that we have, which encompasses all of, all of those platforms and verticals, we cannot go back and say, you know what? I think I'm going to go get a rebuilt liver. I think I want to no, get a rebuilt no. spine. You know what, Alex? I've got like a, uh, you, you know, I, I have this problem with my low back, L5, uh, S1, uh, you know, disc extrusion. We're just going to get a rebuilt lumbar region. You know, we, we can't do that. You know, to your point there, um, 
that you, you know, what's amazing about the body, it's, it's innate ability to recover. It has an incredible ability. If we can get the body before it enters into a clinical state, uh, even after it begins a clinical state, yes, even after it's really deep into a clinical state, the body has an unbelievable ability at its own at its own resources when you feed it the right stuff, when you do the right things, uh, when you change your lifestyle, when you when you change your dynamics, maybe your your environment, your lifestyle, your spirituality dynamics that you're going through, uh, stress, the stress levels, yes. sleep patterns. It mm -hmm. has an ability that it recovers. I, I say, uh -huh. Alex, I call it. We are miracles. You know, when 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 I speak to to my patients and and when I do seminars and and um, motivational talks to different uh, companies and and industries, I ask each person to look at the person next to them and realize that what they're looking at is a miracle. Absolutely. 50 trillion cells, Alex, 50 trillion cells working together as one to create a thought, to create a movement, to create a smile, to cry, mm -hmm. and also to be resilient. And, and in that remarkable, miraculous, God-given, okay, because we're, we're just going to be real today, okay, and on point, okay, that is a miracle, I mean, it's there's so many moving parts. There's so many variables that even the highest computer right now, even AI, could not replicate, could not replicate a human being. It can come close. It could look like and act like, but it's not there. And therefore, it is so important what you said. The most powerful thing that we can do for ourselves is to take care of our bodies before it becomes clinical, before it becomes clinical, and even when it becomes cr clinical, Alex, we are so dynamic, we are so powerful that with the right nutrition, with, with the right panel, receiving the, the data, see, we deal with data, Alex, we're, we're not guessing. No, we're not guessing. We're not, we're not guessing, we're not, well, let's see what happens. I don't like those conversations. Mm -hmm. well, you know, we don't talk to our patients and say, well, let's see what happens. No, this is the plan. We need to take action. And these are the things that you need to do. And 100% of what we do is we empower the body. We empower the body to let it manifest that power of healing and recovery through specific nutritional supplements that are very specific very and high end yeah. recommendations that are panels. We test them monthly or every three months or sometimes every six months because we want to be on point. We want to be the tip of the spear. We're, we're not into the conversation. You're fine. I don't want to be that. I, I cannot afford to talk to someone and say, well, I hope you're doing well. And I think, you know, you will. Or, you know, let's see what happens. I don't like those conversations. I want to be on point. Just like an athlete, mm -hmm. you don't have Bolt going to his trainer and, and his manager, and his trainer and manager says, well, you know, let's see what happens. Maybe you'll qualify in four years for the Olympics. That conversation does not exist, Alex. No, the conversation it doesn't. That, that we have with our patients nowadays is, is such that we can first do deep clinical questionnaires and figure out what's going on. I mean, these are not questions that are just simply, hello, uh, tell me how you're feeling. No, these are deep questions that... How many? How many? There's how literally many? about a good four to 500 basic yes. questions and deep questions. And when I say deep questions, when we look at an individual, we look at them like as if they were a domino. But behind that domino, there's hundreds of dominoes. There's a story. There's a history. There's a dynamics. There's a beginning. There's a, there's a life pattern. Uh, episodes, events, and lives that have changed their, their, their outcomes. Uh, emotions that have changed uh, that may not be visible to that individual, that one present individual we have, but in their past it affected that. Once past we, traumas, past exactly. Mm -hmm. Once we once we assess that that story and really analyze it, and from there we do some blood work, and we can go to all the all the way down, Mario. You and I go down to the genomics of it. We actually see the genes because 
These genes are the actual things that actually produce the enzymes that make our pancreas function at a certain rate. And I guess you could call it the oomph of the body's ability to react. The, the blueprint. The, the, it's the, the blueprint. The expression. Yes. Is, yeah. So the way it expresses. So today, what we didn't have 30 years ago when we started practicing 20, 25 years ago was the world of genomics, the understanding of that we can understand if a person has a certain gene uh, pattern uh, genome, uh, we, can, we, can, we can see what kind of phenotype expressions they have as a result of it. Taking it from there, we can see the story and we can assess what type of dietary changes and what kind of foods we have to figure out what to put inside uh, of their lifestyle. So there's a whole lot of stuff that we're going to be discussing, you and I, Mario, and what we're going to be going through it, and we're going to go down from the genes to the kitchen, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, we're going to, I mean, it seems like it's a good book called From the Genes to the Kitchen, but it really, really starts there. The food, the the, the design, the, the predispositions, the type of feeding patterns. We realize that the nutritional standards of, of the 70s are really catastrophic. Literally, the diet plan that was designed for our children and what we grew up with was the same diet plan that they give a, a, a sow, a pig. And, 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 and it expands. And we wonder why that level of dietary recommendation went south. So now we have new standards and, and applying those standards, the new standards and the new changes, depending on an individual and their issues, is what we're talking about. So functional medicine mm -hmm. assesses each individual dynamics and comes up with a plan so that we can give the individuals tools, uh, ideas, and dynamics. And, and, and as we work the individual processes for that person, we can actually find out what's wrong with them and we can tweak it and tweak it and tweak it to the point where the person finally gets control. We happen yes. to be, you know, there's, there's no question. We're, we're in a very large uh, fitness facility right now uh, the push fitness center, we, we can see that this exercise is always a part of recovery. Uh, it's some capacity, even if it's just, you know, simple sedentary exercises, we got to get the body moving. And that's one component that we discuss. So as we put all these things together, you and I are going to come up with some, some real dynamic changes for our, for our public and our patients, uh, so that we can give them really uh, I guess, nuggets of information, quality uh, takeaways, as you call it, um, to really change their lives. And as we do that, we're going to make an impact. And, and the world has changed. The world has changed that the doctors of today, we need to be mindful of the nutritional dynamics as it relates to whether you're a cardiologist, an endocrinologist, a orthopedist. It really matters. And uh, if not, then today's world, you can see doctors running with PAs, uh, health coaches, health nutritionists, uh, to be able to take up those deep, complex questions uh, and, and help individuals get better. Um, I look forward to going over all this with you, Mario. And uh, I know you've been real excited about this process. Absolutely. You particularly like it in the sense of, of working with athletes, with, uh, with the young athletes and the dynamics of, of getting our youth then before they get the bad habits, right? Because when we teach our children uh, how to eat, you know, this goes on forever. Uh, they don't really always, you know, pay attention to what we say, but they do pay attention to how we, we teach them to eat, how much, how much water to drink. They, they may fight you, but eventually it kicks. And they realize the, the aspects of nutritional dynamics in their lives, and, and that matters. So from the, from the youth to the elderly, it matters. We can change people's lives. So um, I know you got some thoughts to say before we part here, but yeah. um, I wanted to let the El Paso people know that we're going to be here. We're going to be here uh, often. Uh, can't tell you the exact times, but it's usually when we pop up on your on your on your feeds. And uh, we hope that it's information that you guys need, want. Uh, it's changing the world, and uh, we look forward to uh, being a, an impact, a positive impact, or as they say, the change we want to see in the future in the world. Right, Mar? Absolutely. And uh, and in, in closing, what I want to share is uh, it's Sunday today, Alex, and it's the it's the first day of March. I'm telling you, this year is just just exploding, and I and I feel the energy. 2020, March 1st, and um, and the the message is, you know. We are here to impact the, the next generation. We are here to leave a legacy. Our children are our legacy. To leave them better 
than ourselves, to allow them to be magnificent, to be healthier, happier, and more prosperous than we were. And we are here to empower not only them, but to empower the healing community, all of the physicians, to complement them, to assist them in the highest order of ultimate functional medicine. Thank you. We'll leave it there, guys. And God bless and have a great Sunday evening and uh, enjoy yourselves.